Hi guys, Mr. Pollock Biology here again. This is the third video in my series going through uh, this top secret teacher only specimen material set two, paper one for the new AS biology spec. So let's dive straight in. Uh, we're doing question three, I believe. So we did question one, which was mRNA DNA stuff. We did question two, which was gas exchange in fishes. And we're on to question three, which is a phylogenies question. So, we say there are many different species of field mouse in Europe. Field mouse, okay, we're dealing with rodents. Uh, using a phylogenetic uh, classification, all of these species, it says right here, have names that start with apodemus or apodemus. Not sure the way how that's supposed to be pronounced, but I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. Um, so yeah, it's saying what does that information give us about the field mouse? So, or, or field mice in general. So if they all start with apodemus or apodemus, um, then this means that these, this here, is the genus, which means they're all from that same genus. All field mice from same genus, uh, or genus, whichever, whichever, again, pronunciation you prefer. Uh, same, sorry, same genus. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, it means that many, many moons ago, back in ancient history, these guys shared a common ancestor. Okay, so they shared a common ancestor. And that is it for this question. Two marks, nice and easy. Shared a common ancestor. They both evolved from the same species, uh, the same ancestral species, that is. Um, so that's two marks right there, which is nice and easy. Pressing on we have to go through this delightful table um, showing the different taxonomic uh, doodads. So, uh, we've got the classification of the long-tailed field mouse, which it tells us is this, Apodemus sylvaticus, or Apodemus sylvaticus. However, again, pronunciation not important. So this is the genus, or the genus. This is the species and it's going to ask us to fill in uh, the rest of the information just here. Um, so let's have a little look at what we're going to go for. So, a uh, little acronym to remember. D, or an acrostic, how are you going to say it? D, K, P, C, O, F, um, and then G, S. Um, let's have a little look, see. So we can go for a nice little acrostic to remember this. So we can go for, uh, did King Philip come over for group sex? Who knows? He might have done. So did King Philip come over for group sex? And that will help us remember the order of these different taxons. So at the top is our D. That is the domain, which is eukarya, meaning it's a eukaryotic um, critter. K is kingdom. P is phylum. There we go. Uh, C is class, then we've got order, family, genus, species below it, and there are our two marks for completing that beautiful table. So this long-tailed field mouse is from the domain Eukarya, the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Chordata, the class Mammalia, the order Rodentia, the family Muridae, the genus Apodemus, and the species Sylvaticus. So did King Philip come over for group sex? Remember it, it works. Okay, next up, what have we got here? The St. Kilda field mouse. So we've got a different type of field mouse. Um, oh, it lives on only one island off the coast of Scotland. Uh, it's very similar in appearance to the long-tailed field mouse, but it is larger and has lighter coloured fur, so slightly different. Biologists wanted to find out if it was related, if the two populations were related and if they belong to different species. They measured the length of the same features of a large number of individuals from the two populations, and we've got some results. Do the data in Table 3 provide evidence that the two populations belong to different species? Use calculations of ratios to support your answer. So let's have a little look-see. Um, right, well, first thing we can look at is the size and the standard deviations. So what have we got here? Um, hmm. Do these overlap? Yes, there is an overlap. If we plot these on a graph with error bars, we will see that these error bars here overlap each other. 
um, and that means that there is uh, really no significant difference between the head and the body sizes. Okay, Is this true for the tails? Yeah, again, there's an overlap. So, what we can say here is that there is, you know, no significant difference between the length of the head and the body of the two species and the tails of the two species. So, standard deviations overlap. Okay, uh, for the different body sizes. Uh, so, no significant difference. So, no significant difference. But it says in the question we have to talk about um, head to tail ratios, or head and body to tail ratios. Let's have a look, see. So, we're going to do. Uh, this as a ratio to this, and this as a ratio to this, and see if really if the the proportions are the same. So we're going to do 112.3, and we're going to divide that through by 105.5. Then we're going to do 95.2 divided by 90.2, and see what they come out at, and see if they're roughly similar, because that'll tell us whether they are roughly uh, the same in sort of proportions, even though one is maybe a little bit bigger. So 112.3, just smash this into my calculator, divided by 105.5, gives us 1.06. 1.06. There's our ratio. And then the other one is 95.2, divide that by 90.2, um, and that's 105.5, so near enough 106. So to 2dp, they're pretty much identical. So... Uh, ratio of body to tail for both of them comes out at about 1.06 to 1. So what can we say about that? What does that actually mean? Well, it means that the proportions of the body are almost the same proportion. So body uh, proportions of mouse of mouse very similar. And that's all we have to do for that question. It's quite a weird one, but hey, um, the best way to figure out whether these are the same species or not is answered in the next question. So describe how breeding experiments could determine whether they are from the same species. All you do, you take a male and a female and from each species or each proposed species and you get them to breed together. So breed two mice together together and that's from the two populations from and obviously male and the female populations do, 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 two populations and then if indeed they are from the same species they will produce fertile offspring so produce fertile offspring uh, if same species. So that's our definition of a species, two inter, uh, interbreedable groups that can produce fertile offspring. Uh, produce fertile offspring if same species. Delightful. And I think that is the end of it for question three, so I hope that's been useful guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe, and of course check out the other videos in this series. Take care, bye bye.